Hey everybody, uh, we're going to be talking about four reasons why microwaves are bad, a touchy topic. If you don't know already, I'm Dr. Philip Oob. I'm Aubrey. And she's a nutritionist at our yes, practice. <laughs> and so we're going to be talking about four reasons why microwaves are bad, and you probably didn't know it. Generally speaking, we never use the microwave. Mm -mm. And it takes a little getting used to because the microwave is super convenient, right. easy way to take food from being cold they're very warm and, and, and just like we, how we like it mm -hmm. in 90 seconds. And that's nice and convenient. And we were taught to believe that this is totally normal. But it's never normal to take cold food up to warm food in 90 seconds. No. In addition, you really shouldn't be using the microwave for defrosting and all of those things. Yeah. So there's four general reasons. And I've got notes on the TV that I'm going to look at. So the four general reasons to avoid the microwave are it generates cancer-causing molecules, damage the nutrients in your food, kills any probiotics in your food, and then four, releases harmful chemicals from the container that it's in. So okay. the first one and most important one is that it generates gl end, uh, advanced glycation end products. In AGEs. The AGEs, right? And yeah. AGEs make you age Get it? Um, and, and everything else. Right. So these advanced gly glycation end products or AGEs, it's actually taking any sugar in your food. And generally every food is sugar. Yeah. Commonly when we say sugar, people think like, well, I'm not microwaving a Snickers bar. No, right? but even protein has sugar. Right. So every food has carbs and sugar right. in it, even if it's low, 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 low. Even if you're on the keto, there's always kind of trace sugars. Right. So anytime you microwave food or just cook anything on high temperature, mm -hmm. right? right? Anything high temperature where you're burning the food, you're generating AGEs and other harmful chemicals. But the right. AGEs are the ones that get all the press. And all these AGEs are is it's taking the sugar in the food and it's forcing the sugar molecules to attach to proteins, to attach to um fats, cholesterols, lipids, whatever it may, may be, and then it damages those right. things. And those things are actually cancer causing. Um, it's one of the confusing things that um, typically in the human body, if something tastes good, it should generally be good for you. Sugar, not the case. Right. And then the other one is if you ever have like barbecue that's burnt, it's like, ooh, I like those little burnt mm -hmm. ends. That's, awesome. that, that's one of the lies in the human taste buds that they're not actually good. Those right. burnt little crisps are actually dangerous. AGEs, dioxins, all kinds right. of cancer-causing agents. The best way to think about it in layman's terms is if you have a piece of white bread, right? When you first have it, you shouldn't be eating it, but let's just say you have it. <laughs> Don't feed it bread. to dunks either, yeah. <laughs> it should be really soft and malleable and pliable, you know what I mean? It's very soft and mushy. And then what happens after you toast it is it starts to get firm. It starts to get harder. It starts to get a different color. Mm, that's kind just of what, the way we like it. It's so good. <laughs> that's kind of what happens to any kind of lipid membranes in your organs, your tissues, your brain, and those kind of like signaling agents for those proteins. So they get hard and they get unmalleable. And if you think of your arteries and if you think of your tissues, you're literally stiffening those. And it causes damage. So if why if you put a piece of toast in or a piece of bread in the microwave and nuked it, why wouldn't it turn it to toast? And it's because it's a different heating mechanism, exactly. but the, the damage is the same. Right. And so kind of the way microwave works is it makes molecules vibrate and that vibration is what creates heat and that heat spreads to the rest of the food. So the way I like to consider the microwave as working is it's not really generically heating everything in your food equally. Right. It's actually supercharging certain molecules, whatever catches the microwaves that it's supercharging and making that part really, really hot. And then that really, really hot part is actually going to bounce around to other molecules that are cold mm -hmm. and it's going to heat those up. So yes, when you eat the food, you feel like it's generically warmed throughout, right. but it's actually been supercharged in specific points. And then that heat dispersed through to make it nice and normal. But the problem is anytime you supercharge something, you're basically burning it. When you burn right. it, you make those AGEs. So you don't taste burnt products. You don't see burnt but the microwave is basically damaging it. So the common question is, well, mm -hmm. Aubrey, what do you do since you don't microwave your food? So best way to do it is, let's say if you're heating a leftover, the easiest way to do it is get your skillet, put it on a stove, add a little bit of oil, a little bit of water if you want to, not at the same time, that will cause a terrible reaction. Um, but add it on there, heat it up, stir fry it real quick. It'll take maybe three to four minutes. It heats up really fast. Put a lid on it to get some steam in there, and that's basically creating your own reheating mechanism. Mm -hmm. So what if you're at the office and you don't have access to a stove? Toaster oven. That's right. Or you eat it cold like Dr. Ubin. <laughs> <That's laughs> hey, like, this is a trick question. Me under the bus. <laughs> Toaster oven. We have two in here. 
you just like, we have it at 350 375 something real easy 10 mm -hmm. minutes before and it's ready yep it's really so easy. but that's the big difference right yeah. it takes 10 minutes to heat your food up in an oven and it takes 60 to 90 seconds in a microwave yeah and there's a reason so yeah. yes don't i mean don't look at eating one microwaved meal and then saying oh my gosh that's it i'm done i've eaten plenty of microwave food in my life yeah. as i'm sure everyone has but just do your best to avoid the microwave. We would much rather you microwave your asparagus and eat that for lunch than, <laughs> than like something food. unhealthy. So yeah. don't take it to that level. Just know that if there's anything you can do to avoid the microwave, please avoid the microwave right. because of AGEs. Number two, it damages the nutrients in your food. Now, we already went over kind of the biochemistry, the physiology right. of the microwave. And so same basic principle. You take a nutrient and you vibrate it too much. You actually change the chemical mm -hmm. structure of it. So vitamins and nutrients inside of your food can actually be damaged um, right. by the microwave. Now, one thing, I, we were reading some articles and getting some ideas for this, and, and they were saying that it can cause um, specific vitamin deficiencies and things. It's important to know that certain minerals like magnesium and calcium and, and actual minerals, those don't change in the microwave. That's called alchemy. If you can yeah. change calcium to gold, that's called alchemy. That's magic. We'd that doesn't actually rich. happen. Right? Yeah, we'd be microwaving oh, aluminum all day long. Uh, that'd be... Anyway, uh, so... <laughs> So it just be like you're not yeah. losing magnesium and calcium and all the minerals, but vitamins have a complex 3D structure. Yeah. And if you heat any of those up, supercharging them, you will destroy it. So right. they've done studies to say that the microwave damages like 90% of the nutrients in your food. I have a hard time believing that, but there is a reason why when you microwave food, it tastes different. It does. And I did this for the first time. I used to microwave for like, <gasps> I go two years. I was so hungry. I felt so sick. And I was like, I'm reheating my mixed ground turkey. <laughs> it tasted so gross. I threw it away. It was a scut. It was, or I composted you, right? it. Sorry. <laughs> but it, it tastes completely different. It has a strange, almost, it's like tastes empty. Like it mm -hmm. feels like there's not much that tastes left, but it tastes almost plasticky. It tastes mm -hmm. like something completely different. So forget. number three is it kills any probiotics. Yes. Now, most people think nowadays that probiotics come from capsules and powders that right. you buy at the, the grocery store or the pharmacy or from our office, right? But it's important to remember that most of our probiotics is actually from our dirty hands, mm -hmm. our fruit food that's supposed to be in the garden outside and, our, and from our food from the grocery store. Right. Truth be told, nowadays everything's been so cleaned and bleached and washed a million times that there's really not a lot of probiotics in food. Right. But if there are any and you microwave it, they're dead. Right. And that's actually a really, and if anybody doesn't know, that's an easy way to clean your kitchen sponge or kitchen towel mm -hmm. is if it's kind of moldy smelling and you don't really want to wash it and you just want to clean it real mm -hmm. quick, you just get it nice and wet, throw it in the microwave and nuke it, nothing survives. Right. It's beautiful. It's great. When you think of food also... But don't like, eat it. No, don't eat it, don't please. Don't eat the towel. Okay. Food has natural enzymes as well. There's uh, a reason yeah. why, like, when you... When point you take, number five. Point number five. Oh, sorry. Oh, right. But probiotics as well, right? So probiotics and enzymes. And enzymes are meant to help you break down your food. They help your small intestine. They do help your flora. And so what happens is, like, when you talk to someone from dehydrating food, right? It's still considered raw because it's a low enough temperature to where those enzymes... Enzymes. Enzymes. <laughs> aren't destroyed. So when you microwave, you are also leaving any chance for any of those natural enzymes to actually be activated. You're damaging them, those as well. So now you do technically have a harder time breaking down that food mm -hmm. and getting those nutrients that are actually mostly gone now. So staff member that we keep seeing you microwave your food, we will continue ridiculing you. And you need to watch this video again and again until you know why She's you should stop <laughs> microwaving your food. <laughs> Number four, we're almost done. Battery life is blinking. Okay. Number four is harmful chemicals from your containers that you're cooking your microwave right. food in. And so my, my favorite thing when I was a, a new bachelor uh, dad is um, microwaving those plastic containers with broccoli already in it yeah, yeah. and like steaming the broccoli inside the plastic. And then where it, it literally bends after being microwaved for too long. Yeah. So Great. don't cook. If you're going to microwave, at least try to put it on a regular plate, ceramic or something so that you're not getting the plastics mm -hmm. that you're supercharging and heating and then soaking into your food. Um, so we need to cut this video off before our battery <laughs> dies and we have to mess with the audio. So yes. Four reasons not to use the microwave, but don't look at it as terrible. We'd much rather you microwave broccoli than eat a cheeseburger. Cool. Like right our on. channel, subscribe, and we will see you soon. Thanks, guys.